Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's Ricky here from Next Education. So today we're gonna start a new um, topic that's gonna go for three to four videos um, on differential equations. So for those that are aware of the old syllabus from two, three years ago, um, differential equations was, you know, it was in there in um, some sort of diluted sense, but in the new syllabus or the current syllabus for most of you seeing the HC now, um, the new syllabus actually has a, a new defined differential equations topic that covers things like slope fields um, and applications. So the focus of these next few videos is the applications part, um, because um, I just wanna get, you know, show you a few examples from past papers and also um, really get through the proofs of some of the uh, moving from the differential equation to the actual solution. So I wanna cover that. So today, um, the focus will be on exponential growth and decay, very similar. So the way I sort of see differential equations applications is that it's like a glorified rate of change, right? It's a it's basically rates of change questions that you learned back in the year 11 topic um, that's expanded, right, for more um, intense applications. And especially the biggest difference is that instead of um, using just a differentiation, you're going to be using integration, which is why it sort of sits in the year 12 um, part of part of the syllabus. So, without further ado, let's explore um, the rates of change, exponential and, and growth uh, part of the topic that you did in rates of change in year eleven. But we'll go a bit backwards on it and use integration to prove some of the uh, solutions. So let's start there. So, I'll do it in two parts. So the first, exponential growth and decay. Exponential growth and decay part. Yeah, I'll put in brackets here, unin, uninhibited. Unin, be good if I how you spell this. Unin, un, uninhibited, right. So un, unrestricted growth, right? So back in uh, the race of change topic, you would have seen or would recall that if I had a differential equation, right? dp dt. So the rate of change of some sort of population or, or, or um, mass, et cetera, right? dp dt equals to kp, right? So that's what they now call the differential equation. Yeah? In this topic, we got the solution to this, right? To be p equals to an exponential e k t, right? So if k was positive, it'd be exponential growth. And if um, k was negative, it'd be exponential decay. So the most common uh, context or, or application of this when it's positive, when k is positive is uh, population growth. And the most common application when k is negative is uh, radioactive decay of, of like a uh, substance. So up until now, right, in the, and the, you know, if teachers don't explain this to you in this sort of way, um, they, they're not really giving you the full difference between differential equations in year 12 and resistance change in year 11. In year 11, basically, whenever they give you uh, an exponential growth question, right, they give you, they either give you these formulas or they, or they say, please verify that this is um, a solution now. And when you verify, all you have to do is just differentiate, right? They've yet in year 11 to basically say, here's a differential equation, can you please prove the solution, right? So that's what I wanna do with you today here, right? So just to be clear, right? When you're dealing with this here, um, A, the variable A there is essentially the initial population or initial mass. So when T equals a zero, right? My population is A. Now that's important because when I start integrating, right? We all know that there's a constant that we have to find that there is gonna allow us to sub in to find the constant. So as part of this, I'm gonna now prove that when you start from the left to go to the right, you use integration, right? So let's start here. Now we know um, as part of this topic, you would have developed the ability to basically um, integrate both sides. So what we do is basically we say, well, this guy comes up here, all right? And then the P gets aligned with the um, dp on this side. So we effectively break the dp dt um, fraction here. Yeah? So you go dp, yeah, divide that over, become one on p on this side, and this side is k dt. And then we essentially integrate both sides, right, with respect to p and t um, on both sides, yeah. 
So we know that this guy becomes um, the log, absolute value of P. And because we, in, we, we got two integrals, there's no need to insert two constants. We insert one constant on one side and that almost like is a catch hole, right? Because if you think about it, if they're both unknown, if I put one with the other, if I minus it over, it becomes like one bigger unknown, right? So in this case, KT plus some sort of constant, right? That's where we now sub in um, the, um, the initial conditions into here, right? So when t equals zero, p equals to a. So if I sub all that in, it'll be ln a equals to zero, k zero plus c. Therefore, c is ln a, right? Assume that a is positive. So let's just get rid of the absolute value. So therefore, yeah. you know, technically the population p is positive as well. We can get rid of the absolute value. Let's do that now just to clean out and clean our working out a bit. So what am I trying to do here, right? I'm trying to make the value of P of the subject. So let's combine the logs, right? So using your log laws, move it over, minus becomes divide. So combine, oh, so once again, I've got rid of the absolute value, then put it back in. M. Yeah, KT. Guys, mutually exclusive LN and exponential. So E both sides. E, K, T. So therefore I have my solution proven, yeah, through the process of integration. So that's why that um, is a solution to the differential equation. Now we never did this in rates of change. We didn't need to. Well, we didn't have the skills to, right? Cause we didn't have integration skills back in year 11, but now we do. So that's exponential growth and decay. I wanna do you know, a past paper just to really bring that back. But also before I do that now, in some textbooks, the next bit I'm going to do is the, they call it the modified exponential growth and decay. Um, it basically, um, you know, most uh, syllabus questions, so most past paper questions would split this as the advanced two unit type, and then the modified type is a three unit type. So, and certainly in the old syllabus, that was where the dis distinction lay, right? Um, that the modified was clearly three unit and the exponential was clearly two unit. Um, so, now, so maybe I'll call this the modified, yeah, or bound, right, or inhibited, right, uh, exponential growth and decay. So in terms of formula, um, the differential equation is a little bit different right, where it basically has um, a K still, but we're going P minus some sort of constant, right? Where B in most, you know, in, in, in a context would be, you know, room temperature, it would be the oven temperature if you're heating up, right? That's what it is. So like it's a constant temperature or constant bound, right? So for example, if you're, you know, the most common ones are Newton's law of cooling. So if you heat something up, leave it in a room with fixed uh, room temperature, it'll slowly cool. Um, towards that room temperature, but never approach it to that speed. Um, and similarly, if you heat something up in an oven, right? One you'll see later. One of my favorite questions is the Turkey question, two thousand eight, HSC. Um, you heat it to the oven temperature. Oven temperature becomes the value of B, right? Now, the solution for this uh, modified exponential growth in K, basically, it's the same sort of structure of exponential, but we have this sort of constant sitting outside, yeah. Interestingly, and this is really interestingly, right? This is a really interesting point. I don't know whether teachers appreciate this, but whenever you're dealing with this, now I've looked through a lot of questions. I think I've only found one out of like, we're talking hundred, right? Or, or you know, more than a hundred questions that basically, that basically have this structure, but there's only one that doesn't have this. Every other question has a negative K. So what this means is that whenever you're doing modified exponential growth in K, it's always, K is always negative. Also, oh, if there's a negative, K is positive, right? But, then, but basically the power of the exponential is always negative. It's always um, something that flattens out because most questions when they talk about this is the flattening out towards a constant temperature or a constant value, right? 
so you never sort of get like the exponential growth because then it sort of you know, contextually it, it doesn't make sense so i guess what i'm trying to say is i've rarely seen that um with a positive power and that's important for you to um as, uh, you know, identify when you do this question while the exponential growth and decay population growth can have that sort of unbounded nature so decay can be positive I don't know whether any teachers have any more insight on that, but that's certainly something that I've seen. Guys, let's once again prove this. Ooh, but before I do this, right, what's also important for this one is that when t equals zero, right, A is no longer your initial population. So your initial temperature, normally it's temperature, right? Because um, when t is zero, you can sort of see there that the population equals to B plus A right, or A plus B. Yeah? And it must be highlighted that B is a constant, right? Actually, maybe I'll do it like this. K and B are constant, right? That's really important for, for you to highlight because then P is the only variable at play. All right, let's prove this, right? So same deal. We're gonna start off with our differential equation and then we're gonna basically attempt to integrate both sides. So I always show my students that DT comes up here and anything with P in this case, this linear expression, right, goes downstairs. Yeah, so actually, because of the way I've set this, maybe because that's negative, do you mind if I sort of make this B here and maybe turn this guy into P so that it becomes a negative front? So otherwise, it'll be a bit confusing when I prove it and the answer is positive. So, so if I go um, and switch the order of this to B, this one to P, it'll make my algebra a bit cleaner. All right, let's switch that for purposes of integration. So B minus P, DP equals to K DT. And just like before, we can integrate both sides, right? Yep, now the integral of the left forms um, LN, but because that's the function, I need the derivative on, on top, neg derivative of this with respect to P is that. So I basically introduce a negative one there and a negative in front. So this integral becomes negative ln absolute value of p minus b. And on this side, just like before, kt plus one value of c, right? Once again, I will sub in this guy into this step so I can find my constant. Yep. So you can see what's happening, right? The integration just gets a bit, uh, a bit more intense and you can see next week and the weeks after, right? When we do it, the, really the difficulty is in the uh, intensity of integration. Um, and obviously as a you know, three unit student, there's only so much uh, difficulty of integration that you can do unlike four unit students where, you know, when, when they start doing the topic of mechanics, the integration is extremely heavy. So now once we get there, so guys sub that in, so you get LN now, when t0, p is up, so b minus a plus b equals zero. Oh, okay, let's just sub it in that. Now in this case there, b is cancelled, that's just, and then it's absolutely so ln a equals to c. Yeah, let me just check that. Yep, that's fine. So once I got, once I got, I'm gonna sub, a bit, sub it back in, all right? Therefore, um, minus ln p minus, sorry, b rather, p equals to kt minus ln a. ln a is constant. So now, once again, move it over, combine your log laws, right? Maybe I will move this guy over here. So, so do a double switch root, right? Because I want um, this guy to be positive. So negative kt comes on this side. This guy goes on this side and combines it. So b minus p on a. Hopefully that wasn't too quick exponential both sides because it's mutually exclusive uh, mutually inverse right minus kt equals a b minus p on a and then now the trick is to basically make p the subject so times a up so sort of do a do a switch there and you'll get um therefore actually let me see i think you actually get b minus p Yep, yep, yep. So times the A up, P on the side, we actually get a minus. Um, so P equals to B minus A, E minus KT. Now let me see why that's a minus. I think technically it doesn't matter. P minus B. Yeah, because of the, you know what? 
just to avoid confusion, can I ask a favor? At this point here, right? Yeah, at this point here, because I'm taking the absolute value, I'm gonna switch this around, right? Just to make the make the make the make the thing work. It all ultimately depends on which one's bigger, right? P or B. But in this case here, if I sort of said minus KT equals LN. Right, because it's absolute value, I can take out a negative. Yeah, just to ensure that I prove the value that they want me to do, because then when I exponential that, equals to uh, P minus B on A, that's better. Times that up, move it over. Yep, piece of cake. A minus KT, yeah. Perfect, that's better. So the level of integration there obviously gets harder, right? As you uh, put more into your differential equation. But look, for both of these questions, in most of the past paper questions, they've, uh, they're starting, I believe, to ask you to prove the integration part. But up until now, you know, in the old syllabus and certainly in year 11, the past paper questions were just um, verify, right? In which case you just differentiate. To close off today, Maybe I will, uh, to close off this lesson, maybe I will just do two questions, one on the normal exponential growth and the other one on modified. And then next lessons, I will develop um, some of the harder ones, the logistical growth one, which is a really good one for um, you know, COVID um, context questions, et cetera. So, all right, let's do um, a past paper question from Karen Bob. All right, so, you know, questions like this is, uh, classics, right? So in this case, right, the context is that, you know, we have food and it's heated up to a certain degree to kill bacteria. Um, but ultimately, it is um, this formula that determines um, the population of bacteria. Yeah. So you can see it's the not the modified version because it's just A, E minus, right? So ultimately, we're going to get an equation, oh, sorry, a, a graph that looks like that the head towards zero, right? So it's, it's actually um, in the context of radioactive decay, we start with what appears to be 4,000. Actually, that's question number one. Um, and it decreases over time. So just for your sake, that's you know really the uh, shape that we're going for. So let's see what we have here. Sorry, I'm just freestyling here. So food is heated to that. Um, oh, this is important, right? Because I believe that is, let me just check that is um, required. So when T equals zero, oh no, is it required? 130, no, I don't, ac don't actually think it is. Right? It's just number and time, okay. That's about 135 degrees is a bit extra information that isn't needed. All right, guys. So what am I finding? Initial number of bacteria. So when T equals zero, right? And they're after N, next one number of bacteria after five minutes. So once again, T equals to five. We're talking minutes here, right? Yep. N equals the question mark. Next one, find the time taken. So it looks like an exponential and logs question. 50% um, of the bacteria. Yeah. So basically this one here is what is time when N equals to well, a half N, right? Oops. Yeah, so when I'm saying it will be half of, well, in this case, it'll be um, maybe 2000, sorry, half A. And then we'll ask, oh, find the rate. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, sometimes they throw that in. So find the DN, DT, when, when um, same deal there, when it's 2000. And when uh, N is 2000. All right, that's the question. So, let's have a go. First, I find the initial number of bacteria. So when t equals zero, uh, I've got um, n of zero equal to 4,000 e minus 0 0.4 times zero. I mean, you don't need a calculator for that, it's just 4,000. Right, pretty sweet. Yeah, find the number of bacteria five minutes, so t equals five n five. So this is just pure calculator work. So by four, five. Uh, if you did that, say five, five, 
go one ish. Yeah. I mean, check that on your calculator. Don't take my word for it. And number three, time taken. So this is um, time equals to question mark when um, this guy's 2000, 4000 e minus 0 0.4 times t. Yep. So then obviously when you divide that, it's 0.5. And then you sort of solve this exponential equation, log both sides or ln 0.5 because of negative 0.4 t and then make t the subject quite easily. So one on negative 0.4. Now that's fine if it's negative because when you take the log of a number less than one, that's negative as well. Um, and I believe you get one dp, so 1.7 minutes. I forget like that's okay, All right? Pretty straightforward so far, nothing too challenging. And then now maybe save that in memory because you might need that for, for part four, right? So, oops, part four basically saying find the rate. So they basically want dp or dn in this case, and dt. Yeah, I don't have an expression for that. So now I know, I know that n equals to 4000 e minus 0 0.4 t. I'm just going to differentiate this with respect to time. So pretty straightforward. Um, dn dt equals to, now bring down the negative 0 0.4 times 4000. Now you can simplify that. Um, I'm just going to leave it because then all I'm going to do is basically they want this value when the time when it, at 50% uh, of the population, which is basically that time in here. So I would sub 1.7 into there and you should get, let's see, what do you get there? Um, you get negative 8, 1, now 1 dp, I would say, or maybe you just ran to the nearest whole number because uh, you get 810.6, so let's go at 11. Um, bacteria, spell that better, bacteria per minute. Okay. That's it, six marks, two unit paper, not too bad, very very classic, right? The context is a bit weird, and you know, it's talking about population and it's using exponential decay, but still works, right? The mass is still solid. Um, so that's an advanced question. And let me show you now my favorite modified exponential and growth question, right? I love this question because, you know, like, it's just a really nice context, right? So you know, turkey was taken out of the fridge. Um, it's now five degrees. We're going to preheat it in an oven to, uh, at 190, right? So you can imagine the temperature would steadily increase, but never uh, be hotter than the, the oven temperature. So it's almost like a reverse Newton's cooling instead of Newton's cooling, it's heating, right? That's why it's, uh, uh, this, that's the context of this question. So let's see what we're given or what we need to do. So once again, it's temperature reset, right? To start off with, that's important. So I'll do my facts in blue. So when t equals zero, capital T for temperature is five. Yeah, and preheated to this. Now, not that you need to know in this question because it actually tells you, but this is my B, right? Yeah, in my formula that I had before. Yeah. So because you don't need to know because they've actually given, given it to you instead of asking you to derive the, uh, or state the differential equation, right? It's just given to you. So a question here says, show that, that is a, it satisfies uh, both the equation and the initial condition, right? So basically, it wants you to satisfy the equation. In other words, show that it's a solution to the differential equation. So we're here we're differentiating, right? So we're not integrating, we're differentiating. So quite simple, year 11 stuff. And show that it satisfies this initial condition, right? So we need a, it's a double step there. Now, generally speaking, once I do this, right, I give you information to find the value of K. And then a good question is once you find K, use it to find something, right? Either the population after a time or find the time given a population, right? Or given a temperature in this case. So I like this. Turkey was placed at 9 a.m. Now, all, automatically, this question is a bit harder because they've, instead of saying, you know, when you find T, instead of saying it's 150 minutes, you got to now convert that to a time, right? So a little bit harder. It's 9 a.m. 
All right, so 9 a.m. represents t equals zero. At 10 a.m., right, one hour later, now we're talking minutes, are we? You know, let me just check, we are talking minutes. No, we're talking hours. Hours? Does it say? It doesn't actually define time. It doesn't actually define time. Let me see what I should do. I think it's just, yeah, at t equals one. It's temperature, oh, hours, right, perfect. Yeah. So one hour later, the temp, so it gives you, see, it gives you a fact, right? Give you um, t equals that. So then I'll go at t equals one, capital T is 20, 29. Yep, the turkey will be cooked when it reaches 80 degrees. So this is saying, and then find the time. So this is saying t equals a question mark when capital T is 80. Can you see that? So the first fact allows you to find the value of k. The second gives you the question. All right, so, okay, that's all hunky-dory. Let's attempt this question. So the first one, whenever they're asking me to set, uh, you know, prove that it satisfy, satisfies a question, right? I don't need to integrate. I start with the solution. And my aim is to differentiate this with respect to time and making it look like the differential equation and go, therefore it satisfies it, right? So when you differentiate this, the constant goes away the negative k comes down. I'm gonna, if, the, if it's okay with you, keep a negative there, bring down the negative k and just go times negative k and then times e minus kt. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it like that because what I'm gonna see is that, you know what, can I, oh, sorry, I, I've not, in, not in different yet. I've got that 185. When I so there's a minus 185 times negative k e minus kt. Actually, no, sorry, I keep let me get it into a structure. So bring down the minus k and times minus 185. I'm trying to make it easier for me to prove it. Yeah, and once you get down to there, you can sort of see that this see this here looks exactly the same as here. So, you know, theoretically, if I was to rearrange this guy to make this guy the subject. Okay, T is that way equal to T minus 190. I'm gonna sub this into there to get exactly what I want, right? Therefore, DT, DT, right? Always use your solution to rearrange and sub in, in this case, T minus 190. And then I go, therefore, satisfies um, the solution, the equation. Yeah. All right, that's one mark, obviously, and then initial conditions. So based on this, based on this formula here, when t equals zero, capital T equals a 190 minus 185 e minus k zero is five, and that satisfies the original, uh, the initial condition. Therefore, satisfies initial conditions. Yeah, two mark, pretty straightforward. Nothing too, um, nothing too dramatic about that. Let me just pop that. Never like it out of slide. Okay, keep going, part two. So what's, what are we saying here? Let's use fact number one, right? When t equals one, so when t equals one, capital T is 29, guys, sub that in to the equation so I can find the value of the constant. So 29 equals to 190 minus 185 E minus K and time is one. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. So it looks like, what's that? Uh, I'm trying to make K the subject, right? So 185 E minus K, 190 minus 161, ln, sorry, move it, divide it over, ln both sides, get rid of the negative, you should get there for k is equal to negative ln 161 over 185. Now, what a 
I'm, I'm just going to um, leave it actually in that exact form because I'm going to use it. The question doesn't ask me to find K to 3DP. Just leave it, right? I'm just going to put a box around that. Yeah, I'll need it later. Yeah. Now, so what do they actually want me to do? They, they want me to find the value of time when the uh, temperature is 80, right? So then, once again, sub in 80 equals to 190 minus 185. And this, and this time, I found K, K is found, and time's missing, right? So I need to make T subject, yeah? So I then basically do my rearrangement. It's 110 to 185, E minus KT equals 110. Once again, make k the sub. Oh, sorry, make t the subject. Divide the one eight five over. Divide by uh, ln both sides, and then divide by one. Uh, divide by negative k. So ln. I keep doing it. it makes no difference. Right? Absolute values on that. Because it's positive. Yeah. So you do that, and this in this um, instance, I want to sub this guy in when I do this on my calculator. Into there, right? Guys, if you punch that in, I believe you should get 3.74-ish, right? Now, if you did all that, that was all fantastic. You probably get two marks, maybe two and a half. Um, the question is, find what time to nearest minute. Now, this is hours. Not only is it hours, it's hours after 9 a.m. So if you add that, add three hours to 9 a.m., it's 12 p.m. and add 0.74 of an hour, it's about 44 minutes. So this is like three hours and 44 minutes. So I would say, therefore, the time is 12.44 p.m. after nine o'clock. That's when it's actually um, the answer. Yeah. So guys, this can be, can be done using year 11 differential, uh, uh, differentiation uh, skills. Um, I haven't shown you a question yet where we basically integrate or is required to integrate um, to basically prove the um, prove the solution. You will see that in the next few videos, right? Especially next video when I start um, demonstrating the logistical growth um, question where it's basically something that grows exponentially and then sort of um, flattens out exponentially as well. Hope you like the video. If you do, please give me a like. Um, give the video a like. Subscribe to your friends. I'll see you guys for the next one. Thank you.